Hi guys, and a big, huge welcome to the Bliss and Thrive podcast. It is your host, Karis Anderson here, and today I am joined by the most fabulous Rick Buller from Get Fit with Rick. We have such a cool conversation. We chat all about weight loss journeys, nutrition, talk about his YouTube channel, which is incredible. And we also talk about him becoming a dad. It's a really cool episode. I hope you enjoy. I just want to dive in here quickly at the beginning and say, if you are listening to this before March 22nd, then my free three-day Kickstarter is starting on Monday, March 22nd. So I've popped the link in the description to the podcast. Check it out if you want to, but let's dive into this incredible episode. Hi guys, and a big welcome back to the Bliss and Thrive podcast. It is your host, Karis Anderson here. And today I am not alone, and I'm very excited about this because I am joined with the hunk the one and only Rick Buller from Get Fit with Rick. Hey, what's up? (laughs) Hunk, I love it. (laughs) So um, if you guys don't know who Rick is, he is a basically a walking walking workout machine. He he has a YouTube channel called Get Fit with Rick and he does these incredible walking workouts. Um, And they're kind of taking the world by storm at the moment. And me and Rick actually know each other from way before in our dancing days. And I'm so happy he's joining me on the podcast today. How are you doing, Rick? I'm um, awesome. What an introduction. Cheers, mate. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is awesome. Um, I'm so happy to be on. T- I listened to all, all your listeners. I listen to Karis' podcast all the time. And honestly, it's one of the best podcasts. So informative. And um, whoever listens to this, you are in safe hands because her content is top notch. Ah, <laughs> oh, now I'm blushing. That's yeah. lovely. So I'm really excited to have you on today because Rick is an incredible trainer. He is a weight loss coach like me, um, working with people to like motivate them, inspire them, and we have so many of the same lines of thought. Um, so I'm really excited to get into conversation today. Um, but first of all, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Rick, so everyone can kind of get to know you a little bit. Okay, cool. So I live in Dubai. Um, This is why I live with my wife and my six-month-year-old baby, uh, Sophia. And I was a uh, dancer. So I was a dancer from uh, 21 to 30. Let's say 31. I like 10 years. Sounds a nice round number. (laughs) Uh, I did 10 years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Uh, uh, Let's call it a decade. So... um, I was a dancer from 20 to 30. (laughs) And uh, yeah, so I I, I danced for a bunch of artists, traveled around the world loads, and it was just um, the most amazing 10 years ever. Um, After 10 years, I realized um, I need money to survive. And that was when, yeah, yeah, that little thing. So that was when I moved to Dubai. I was on a dance contract, moved to Dubai. And when I was there, I'd, so I knew that it was time to move on. And uh, I've always been training, always been doing, obviously, alongside dance, always been doing uh, weight training and, and obviously fitness and stuff. And uh, it was a natural progression. And I've always been a, kind of like an unofficial trainer, like to my mates and stuff like that without having the qualification. So I've been, cause I've been mm. doing it for like, since I was like 14, really. And um, then, yeah, I made the transition to become a personal trainer. I started my company in Dubai. And then I started a boot camp, uh, which became the biggest boot camp in Dubai, which was like an amazing achievement. And then recently have, um, since obviously after lockdown, um, the uh, in-person stuff became harder, became a lot harder to kind of um, grow and stuff like that because, you know, there's different rules now. So then I started moving online on YouTube. And then (laughs) the, the most crazy thing happened in like space of, I set a goal of like, if I could upload every week for a, for a year, um, by the end of 2021, I can get to 10,000 subscribers. And then um, in the space of six months, I've just passed 150,000 subscribers on YouTube, <laughs> which is obscene, ob- absolutely obscene. And um, it's I, ridiculous. I ignore that. I take that as 150 people. And now I'm just in yeah. a transition of closing all my in-person stuff to fully focus online, which is kind of an exciting time, big jump, but mm. super exciting to transition online. And uh, yeah, and uh, a little bit on the family side, actually, the first day I moved to Dubai was when I met my wife, fun fact. And oh. uh, yeah, so then after uh, a couple of years, we got engaged then got married and then had our beautiful baby Sophia. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, I'm in a, 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 a fairy tale world at the moment. Amazing. Like I could just hear the 
energy and the positivity just like coming off you. Like I'm in Mallorca, you're in Dubai, but I can literally <laughs> feel it all coming through. It's incredible. Oh. So now you're doing everything online and letting your in-person stuff go, which is something that I did um, when I had my daughter. All my in-person stuff, I stopped doing everything channeled in online. I think, I feel, I know actually, that there's actually a huge benefit for the client that way as well. Do you feel that too? Like what do you feel the benefit is for the, the customer, like moving everything to online? Yeah, with, with that, there, there's um, different areas you can go into. So when uh, lockdown happened in March, um, Dubai was, as, you, as at the time of recording, Dubai is like the place that everyone seems to be escaping to from the UK um, <laughs> because we were the first ones to go into lockdown. I mean, strict lockdown. Mm. It was in one month after in March, we were wearing gloves, wearing masks. You had to book an app to go outside the house for an hour, and that was a max time you could go for. We did, I think, UK didn't happen, I want to say something, maybe to July or August, but we did this in April. So we were in lockdown for a lot longer, but earlier on. So then it allowed Dubai to open up a lot sooner. Um, mm. So when I moved online, I was doing hit workouts and stuff like that. What I found in person or in online were people were struggling with the level of effort they needed to put in when I wasn't there yeah. in person. So the style, that particular style of workout, a lot of people had struggled with because they went to my boot camp for me and my energy and all that stuff in person. Yeah. And when it was online, I was talking to one of my clients and she said, do you know what, I, just, I don't find that online stuff as easy because, um, you know, sometimes you do an exercise, I don't want to do it, so I'll go off and have a cup of tea and come back after 10 minutes. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm sweating my butt off because I feel like you're doing it. And uh, so that, that level of exercise for so my clients wasn't working online. Mm. But when I moved to walking workouts, which was kind of a lower barrier to entry, mm. I personally found that was the perfect thing online. It was the yeah. ultimate thing to do online because sometimes you need a lot of motivation to put on and go, all right, I'm going to do burpees and lunges today. Like, ah, cool. Yeah. Let me get motivated. But um, where I do walking workouts, it's pretty much like put on some music, let's jam it out. And after 10 minutes, you're going to feel so warm and ready to go um, that if you want to progress and do another exercise or just carry on with the walking workouts, um, that the walking workouts in particular were something that was perfect to be online in person. Yeah. You know, you're, by the time you get the effort it takes to get there, you might as well walk there and you've done your workout. And then yeah. <laughs> but online, it's just one thing that you can fit around your lifestyle. You can fit around your kids, which is so important, around your job. And with people being indoors, it's something that you yeah. can actually look forward to doing as part of your pick-me-up for the day and getting your exercise in in a fun way. Um, so for me, it, yeah, it wasn't like a straight transition online that people want to do these hit workouts online for my clientele because they were used to it in yeah. person. But with the walking work outside, that was the ultimate thing to do online. That's so awesome. And it's perfect for like the situation the world is in now. Exactly, Even yeah. though it sounds like Dubai is kind of a bit more freedom now, uh, the rest of the world. And even people are just still nervous to go to group classes exactly, and stuff like yeah. that. What I like about the online side is that you can, it sounds really creepy almost, but you can kind of like infiltrate their life um, throughout the week yes more than just like that one hour that you see someone exactly they miss that session they might miss you for another three days whereas they can always sneak it in like as a kid go to bed or like well first thing in the morning and yeah. it's the weird like getting tags on on instagram is just at first it was really like it's a strange thing to absorb that there's someone in tennessee with her two kids and she's, she's filming her doing my workouts, watching on her widescreen TV. And I'm like, that's me <laughs> on her TV. Like, how did we get to this point? But uh, now it's kind of, it's kind of normal because I get, I get tagged in these posts of people doing it around the world and stuff. Um, but it's, amazing. It's, it's finding those little pockets that you can fit someone in that does not on your yeah. schedule. That is just a, it's the, you know, adaptability. Is that, that's a word, right? And I think what you said as well about having that low barrier to entry, like sometimes a tip I'll give people if they're really struggling to, you know, motivate themselves to do a workout is like just put 10 minutes on the clock yeah. and just say, I'm just going to move for 10 minutes and then do more. And the walking workout is kind of that thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to walk. Who can't walk, you know, and then you, you build it up and you build it up and that, that's how you can build up your motivation. And once you've, you know, if you're working, I guess if you're working with people who are a little bit heavier, once they've lost that initial weight, then you can start to advance them more into different workouts and stuff. So Oh, it's amazing. Exactly. And, and that's, that's the one thing with the uh, walking workouts. The reach uh, is f way far beyond than I... Uh, can I tell you how I started it? Yeah, please. Tell us everything. 
Because I'm going to copy what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish you would, Karis. I wish you would. Um, uh, by the way, guys, I'm going to be pushing Karis into new levels after this. Uh, that's, that's not planned anyway. But the um, I was training clients in person. And uh, so boot camp couldn't restart for a while. So I was doing in-person clients for the like the five clients that were okay with me coming to the house. So like my business kind of really took a nosedive yeah. in terms yeah. of income and, and stuff like that. But uh, she was struggling to hit a step. Like, let's set a goal, 10,000 steps a day. Let's do this. And she's like, oh, today I hit 3,000. I'm like, wow, let's, let's, all right, let's find these pockets, right? In the morning, we can go after, we can drop the kids to school. Why don't you go for a walk then? Then maybe uh, in the evening, take a family walk then. So now we've got two blocks. Then maybe during the day we can, do, so we're trying to work it out like that. And bear in mind, she was hitting 3,000 a day. Um, so I got to her house at 8 a.m. to do a session. And she goes, oh, I've hit 7,000 steps. I was like, sorry, what has happened here? And she's like, oh, I'm just doing these walking workouts. I'm like, what's a walking workout? So she showed me um, this lady, Leslie, um, uh, who does Leslie walking workouts. And proper old school, proper like flare trousers. Let's go, ladies. We're marching Oh, out. my God. I'm wearing flared trousers Yo, today. Oh, come on. All the points. Don't go even diss the flared trousers. Yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, some would say unacceptable, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> all my clients don't wear flared trousers. I might commit to them. But the... Uh, um, <laughs> So she's doing these walking around, and I looked at it, and it was basically like with Leslie's ones, just marching on the spot, right? She's just marching, marching, marching. I thought, what clever way to get your steps in, like doing a workout yeah, fun. for steps. So I was like, cool. Um, and she's like, why don't you do one for like your clients? I was like, that's a great idea. So instead of, because, you know, as a trainer, you kind of want to cover all bases. You want to say, all right, you want a protein recipe? Here's a protein recipe. You want a hit workout? Yeah. Here's one. You want a low impact stretch? Here's one you can do. So you, as a trainer, you want to kind of have everything for your clients. So I thought, yeah. oh, let's do a walking workout for my clients. So I put it on YouTube and sent them the link, right? It was like maybe 50 people I sent the link to. And then in the space yeah. of a week, it reached like 20,000 views. And I was like, hold on a minute. <laughs> this is more than 50 people. <laughs> yeah. So then that, that, that spurred me on to start pushing down this kind of niche of getting, helping your, get your steps in. Because obviously realise that people, amazing. Aren't, yeah, people aren't walking in their home. They're not getting their step count in. I send them to my girls. I send your workouts to my girls, yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah, because awesome. we have a 10,000 10, step a day uh, goal. And, like, sometimes it's raining. Yes. I'm like, oh, go check out Rick. <laughs> As, and then when you're, like, in the living room marching up and down, it's just like, okay, cool, that's fun for the first day or two. And then you're like, all right, this is... And, and let me just give you a little caveat. These aren't walking workouts at all. It's dancing You're disguised dancing. with the walking workout title. Yeah. <laughs> we're, just, we're just jamming. It's just having fun and jamming. You're doing yeah. two steps. You're doing, you know, it's... And um, from the Leslie's ones, for example, she's kind of... Um, and reason of my growth as well, I will say, isn't because I've done anything special. It's because I've tapped into a built-in audience from Leslie, whose top right. video's got 74 million views. Ooh. I mean... 74 can i get 100 of those yeah <laughs> so that's 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 kind of like what i was targeting is like all right there's already an audience doing this so now let's make it a bit more modern let's put my back my cap on back to front let's do some <laughs> modern tunes let's dance it out a bit and let's have a bit of chat let's have a bit of essex banter and then yeah that's 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 where the growth has come and you used to be a dancer so yes i mean you know, going from the West End to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to dancing in everyone's living room. <laughs> yeah, because it's funny because as you grow, you want to try and find stuff that's like your niche, mm. stuff that what can you do that only you can do? My thing was only I can sound like I sound when I talk. Yeah. So I'll do videos that aren't muted videos. You know, a lot of people do muted videos where you put on, they put timer. But I was like, well, there's loads of those available, but no one can sound like me. And maybe 10 people hate me talking that's probably not my audience. So yeah. people, 10 people that love me talking, all right, let's, let's focus on them. So um, I used to do walking workout videos. I, did, I alternated between people talk, or the ones where I was talking yeah. and ones where I wasn't. But then um, there was a little debate happening in the comments. People were like, oh, I prefer it. I need your motivation. And some people were like, oh, I love it when you stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, cool. I'm like, well, you're probably not my ideal client. So, um, <laughs> yeah, the ones that want you to shut up, yeah. probably not the ideal client. <laughs> yeah, they're just searching for a workout on YouTube, right? So they're not kind of connected with me. And I yeah. want to connect with, you know, if you're going to create change in someone's life, they have to connect with what you're saying and your ideas and stuff. So with the, um, those workouts I was doing and I was doing the talking uh, and I was, you know, putting this content out, it was specialised to something only I could do. I was a dancer. So there's not many people going to be an ex-professional dancer who can do these workouts. There's not... 
many people that are going to sound exactly like I sound. So the combination is what made it unique. Yeah. Now, whether people liked it or not, that was, you know, luckily they did. But there was obviously a chance that I was only going to find a very, very niche audience. But I just figured out that that was going to be my niche audience, you know, whoever that was. I love it. Yeah. So I think it's just, it was finding and combining dance yeah. with, walk, with exercising. I mean, wow, that's, that was a... I'm one step away from being a Zumba instructor. <laughs> yeah, it is like Zumba with Rick, but it's not, it's better. But um, I think the, there's something that the listeners can take away there is you thought, you know, F this, I'm just going to be myself. I'm not going to try and be anyone else. I'm just going to be me. Either they like me or they don't like me, but at least I'll know I've been authentic and I've got far in life by right? being authentic. Yes. Um, and I think so often we try to compare ourselves to other people. We try and emulate what other people are doing. We do it in our health and fitness journeys. We do it in our like mindset and personal development journeys. Like if you're just totally authentic and you go 100% in on who you are and what you want to do and who you want to be, yeah. you can't go wrong. Yeah, and I was listening to uh, James, James Smith. Was uh, James Smith? Who, if you guys listen to him, he's obviously like a quite a raw. Uh, a trader and he you know they call him Gordon Ramsay yeah. of the fitness world and he was he said something that was really like uh, it stuck with me and it was if you went into a room and uh, you was maybe at a dinner party that you didn't know anyone and there's, there's 20 people in there and someone's going oh racing car I love racing cars like, yeah and it's blah 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 and you're sitting there going this is a load of crap I hate this and you stood up and went I think it's a load of bollocks mate sorry I didn't mean to swear that was a, I don't normally no you can I, swear on my podcast oh, okay. it's fine I don't, I don't normally it's about <laughs> a daughter I just don't I try not to, but I'm just using his words. And he goes, "This is." He goes, "If I start to say this is a load of bollocks, everyone's going to go, who's that twat that who's going yeah. this load of bollocks?'" Because then you go off away from the conversation, you go to the bar, and then there'll be a couple of people come up to you. I think it's a load of bollocks as well. And he goes, "You'll find these people that love what you're saying, and they're so loyal to you because they believe in your message." So it wasn't about trying to fit in with everyone and go, "Oh yeah, racing car. Oh that, oh, I love that. The cars and stuff." Mm. It was going, "I don't like it. Anyone else not like it?" And then you find yeah. those people and then finding two people at every dinner party that agree with you. Then you build like this team, this community and everyone's on the same wavelength. Everyone's on the same wavelength and it's a much more intense experience together when you were all there for the same cause and you have that like same belief system. Exactly. And, and, I love it. Yeah, easy trying to conform to a lot of things that are going on. And it's uh, mm. even with what I'm doing, it's so easy to fall in the category of just doing what everyone else is doing. But I'm constantly looking at doing what everyone else isn't doing and finding what can I do that's going to be, yeah. I think, taking things to the next level. We've even now, like, built up a really good following. But even now, I'm looking at what is going to make this to the next level. Like, uh, uh, I, I don't say this, this sounds really... Um, what's the word? Egocentric. But I'm really, I, <laughs> I'm not that person at all. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not an ego person. But I've had so many messages of people putting me in the same categories as Joe Wicks. Now, Joe Wicks is the god of the fitness world in the UK. Yeah, he's taken over. Yeah, I've had so many people go tagging me in posts. It's, it's like, I was doing Joe Wicks or Ricks today, or I'm choosing Rick. And I was like, I kept getting tagged in these posts. So my mind says, I, would never, I wasn't even thinking about a Joe Wicks... Um, level because obviously he's yeah. in the millions of followers right but then it now i'm in a, now i'm now in a mindset of why not i like i love joe wicks i think he is the best i think he's so good his message his um authentic th authentic what's what um, <laughs> authenticity <laughs> oh, that's the money um, that's what i was a dancer two dancers trying to put a sentence yeah, together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this could be a disaster but his authenticity his message his um his positivity that's what yeah. it's about. And then, but now, like, my target is, it used to be 10,000 by the end of 2021. And now I'm, I'm just targeting a million. Because if I don't get to a million, it's going to be further than if I targeted another 1,000 people. So that's, that's the... That's amazing. But I think it's just, uh, as you said, there's, like, that imposter syndrome and stuff like that, which mm. happens when you're doing anything like this. But I think it's believing in your message. Is there, is, would there be a million people that believe in just getting moving and being positive well, i think so yeah. so is it possible to so yeah is it possible to reach them well let's find out <laughs> yeah i love it it's just like sky's the limit anything's possible yeah and yeah you're totally right about joe wicks is he is authentic he is i mean i follow him on instagram i checked out his story the other day and he was just like 
oh, I don't feel like filming today. I don't want to perform. Mm. And, I, and I feel like that sometimes when I'm filming another workout. I'm like, oh, I just want to do a workout for me. I don't feel like filming it again. I've been refilming all my programs. Yeah. So it's been a lot. Um, and I was like, am I the only one who feels like that? Oh, no, he feels like that as well. And he's got like a million subs. So Yeah, he's got this, this, this uh, almost this need that he has to be like, if he's getting booked for different places, he has to show up. There's no... He has to like, be on. Yeah, he's just got to be on it. And he's, every person that meets him will have a story about meeting him. And if one of those stories yeah. turns out, oh, Joe Wicks, oh, he's such an idiot. It'll, like, <laughs> that, that's just not his personality. It'll ruin his brand. Exactly. And he, so he's got, he's got to be on. And it's not fake, but it's just like, if you're tired and you... Uh, you know, uh, he's got this, this this level of pressure, and I take my hat off to him because since you know I followed him when he had seventy thousand subscribers on Instagram, until now I have not seen a change in his personality. He's still this no. loving, really happy dude that is just out to help people, and I think help mate, people that is what it's about. Yeah. And as a tra as every tra every trainer is, every train starts because they want to help someone. Things change after a while, and you may look for subscribers and followers and build a business, mm. but the 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 message is. How can I help someone else? And it just, you know, feel a certain way. And it's, it's, um, it's that authenticity and knowing it's coming from the right yeah. place than it is just trying to... You can tell the ones who are in it for the subscriber count and the ones who are in it to help people. Yes. Um, and it's so rewarding. Like, mm -hmm. I get messages from my girls all the time saying, I'm so glad you're so normal and you feel like this. And, you know, I'm not the ripped girl, you know, showing people how amazing my abs are or whatever but I think that that feels so much more real um and people connect to it so much more like it, it's so important yeah, sorry I, was I did a nutrition talk right and I went we're gonna go for a Q&A and I sat there with a couple of bourbon biscuits and a cup of milk and I went that's what I'm having baby and I was like could I be the first trainer that's ever had bourbon biscuits while talking about nutrition yeah I could be that could be my niche the yeah. bourbon biscuit nutrition talk yeah <laughs> I have it in my, like, when I introduce myself, I say, like, I'm a mum, coach, chief motivator and chocolate lover. Yes. I love chocolate. 100%. And then um, after I did, I do, like, a live check-in with my group every week. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go now because Joanne brought in ice cream and we're going to oh go have ice cream and wine. God, that's my ultimate. Like, that's my ultimate. This is how we live. Yeah. This is what... This is normal life, and I think that that's just a bit of a relief for people, really, to be like, oh, right. Yeah. It's not all broccoli and chicken. I think when, when like, trainers, when they try to um, help someone, right? So someone's eaten, bad, got bad diet. So you teach them everything to do that's perfect. So if they take 10% of that, they've improved by 10%. If you, yeah. and, and sometimes if you teach someone... For example, let's say flexible dieting, right? If you teach someone, oh, do you know what? You can include donuts and cereal and, you know, Cocoa Pops and all that in your diet and carry on. Some people will take that as, great, my diet is Cocoa Pops, um, biscuits, yeah. chocolate, cake with a protein shake. You're like, no, you missed, yeah. you missed the message there. But it's, Took the wrong bit away. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think that the intention is correct with what train, some trainers try to do. But it's, um, I think... It's giving people enough credit that they understand that, okay, don't go, you know, when we say a balanced diet, it means you can include everything in your diet. But it doesn't mean your, your diet is predominantly these foods. But we're giving you kind of the, the guidelines to say that you've got the freedom. You don't have to put pressure on yourself to eat these things. Yeah. It's just saying, right, let's balance my diet out. So if I do want to include certain foods in my, food, in my diet, it won't affect your results. But keep no. it balanced. Yeah, we have the 80-20, which is, I guess same is kind thing. of like yeah, what yeah, you do exactly, as well. Exactly yeah, same. like the and you know sometimes when it goes a bit more 60-40 or 50-50, yep. <laughs> um, it's probably not going to get you the best results. But at the end of the day, 80-20 just means you can take that little bit of pressure off yourself. Yes. And when you take that pressure off, then it doesn't like lead into like guilt binge cycle or like oh I'll just eat the whole pack of bourbons then yeah and I think you're the, you're the same as me like I, I do not believe at all in cheat days and cheat meals it's like I, that, mm. that, that methodology is very from old school bodybuilding which was like yeah. six days a week you're Refeed. yeah you, you're gonna have this one day we let loose alright cool so now you've got a wedding and you go to a wedding sorry I'm not gonna eat what I want because Saturday is my blowout day right now you're antisocial <laughs> yeah. um, and then you go to a weekend and because you've been craving this this feeling of sugar then you overindulge so you've plateaued your week and it's, and it's just like yeah. okay how about we Kate, take, go into let's have what you want on a daily basis now you're not now you're just eating about something and, and I think when you start eating a better diet you're not 
now consciously thinking of eating a better diet. You are just... Naturally. Yeah. You're, you're not craving a burger every day. Yeah, you just don't have that. And, and when you have a diet that's kind of full of um, processed foods and stuff, your body craves it. So then when you come off it, it feels like, you know, coming off ricking, you know, addiction to something, yeah. you crave it. But then when you go back to eating like a healthy diet, you're not going, oh, I've got to turn that burger down again. Oh, I can't have it. You're just going, that's I'm right. Don't actually want it anymore. Yeah, it's yeah, funny that. It, it, no, yeah, sorry. No, I'm just interrupting all over the place. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just, <laughs> we're shooting from the hip, by the way, so we're, we're just going to see how it goes. When you're, when you're thinking long-term, you're thinking long-term results, I think it's important for people to realise you're not fighting against your will every day once you nail it. You're just going, this is what I do, right? When you like, um, I listened to one of your podcasts, you gave a perfect analogy where you said, when you go to the toilet, you flush the toilet, then you wash your hands, then you dry hands. You're not going, oh, I've got to flush the toilet. Oh, I'm stressed out. Then you go, I've got to wash my hands. You know what? I might do it tomorrow. <laughs> I'll come back to it because this is... You just, it's just the routine you get. You're not thinking about it. You're making, not making a subconscious effort where you're trying to really work. It's just, this is, and, and it comes down to initially, obviously when you start, you do have to make certain changes and they, might, yeah. they may not, uh, they may be very different to yeah. what you're used to. If you're used to having a bowl of cereal in the morning, which is going to sh- spike your blood sugar levels and then crash and you're going to crave some sugar later on. And then when you come off that, you might be like, oh, but I really crave that. You will initially. Then you won't have that craving and then you'll, yeah. When you have, and then you'll feel like those foods feel a little bit heavy. You do feel a little bit flatter when you have them. So when you do have them, like just where we are, right? We live in our compound. There's a called a Bob's Fish and Chips, right? Every now and then, me and Roberta, we have this, this thing where we're like, I oh, fancy Bob's Fish and Chips. Like, yeah, me too. Let's do it. Ten minutes afterwards, we're like, I am never <laughs> eating Bob Fish and Chips again. I feel awful. And, you, and we've yeah. got you know, leftovers because sometimes we just can't finish it. And, you know, we don't want to waste food but we don't want that in our house anymore. So if there's leftovers, we're like, get rid of it, because it's just, I've got it no. out of my system. But you realise how foods make you feel. And so yeah. as I go back to, my, back to my point, it's not yeah. the long term. Please don't think that when you go on this journey, you are now forever on a diet, because you're not. You're just, no. you're just, uh, you're, you're, no. the feeling you have towards food completely changes. Once you get an understanding of it, you just, you know, some, it's like, imagine being full up, like you're completely full up. You can't, and someone goes, do you want a pizza? You're not going, oh, no, I've got to turn on a pizza. You're going, no, I'm all right, mate. I'm done. And it's the same thing, you know. Yeah. And it's that freedom from food. And that, yes. you know, I, my whole thing and your whole thing as well is like to teach people how not to diet. Yes. How to like never be on a diet again. Um, but at the beginning, it might feel like a diet mm-hmm. because, as you said, it is difficult. You do have to restrict yourself. Like with any change you know if you're sitting down to study for an exam you have to sit down get the knowledge in your head you know you have to go through that little bit of pain to get the pleasure at the end um so yeah i think it's important that people know like okay it's a little bit hard at the beginning yeah as you said like once you change your opinion on food change your actual taste yes become mindful of like how that bob's fish and chips how that mcdonald's how that coke makes you feel and that doesn't become your normal you know, like if you're always eating shit, then you don't realise how bad that makes you feel because that's your normal. Yes. Yeah. So if you if you drink, um, I don't know if, that, if you drink sodas, I love a diet soda, like a diet lemonade. I love a diet lemonade. That stays in my diet because I just enjoy it. Yeah. Having a full fat Coke. Oh, my God. What? It's like having 10 teaspoons of sugar mixed into a shot of water. And you're like, this is horrendous. But you would have It doesn't never even taste it. good. Yeah, it tastes so sweet. It tastes too sweet. And you're like, and, but then when you drink it regularly, you don't notice it. And it's only when you come off it, come off it, but that you, yeah, you realise like how that. horrendous it is. It's like, you know, if you had a, if you're used to having, th- let's say three sugars in your tea when you were younger, because you got yeah. sweet tea, and then you go to two, then one sugar, they may not have, uh, you know, sugar or anything like that. But as soon as you get, have a three tea sugar, Three tea sugar. Yeah. Sense, yeah. Three tea sugar. Three sugar tea. Three sugar tea. There you go. Three tea sugar. Yeah. <laughs> is that, what is that? It's like a boy band. Three tea sugar coming at you. Um, so if, you, if you're used to having like three sugars in your tea and then you then move to two sugars and one sugar and then you go back to three sugars, that tea tastes so sweet. It gives you that feeling of like, oh, this is awful. It's yeah. And it's the same thing with fast food and, and sugars and sweets Everything. and chocolates. And it's just, again, initial stage. You're coming off your addiction, but it's just not your addiction. It it's, is. It's, it's, the way the, it's the way the industry has made it. You know, they make food to taste good. It's not your fault. Yeah. They make food taste good. So if you taste food and it tastes good, 
it, that's not your fault, right? That's what it's designed for. Yeah. You'd be a terrible chef if you made food that tastes bad. Um, but in in you know the, then the caveat with that is then it's high, high likely it's going to be processed or have some sugar in it or something yeah. like that. Um, but then. You know, it, it, it does become easier. This journey becomes so much easier. But the initial stage is where you've got to put the work in. Yeah, 100%. Someone messaged me earlier as a girl who's on my program. And she was like, you know, what, what's your exercise routine now? Like, what do you eat? What do you do? And I really had to, like, um, question before <laughs> I wrote back because... I don't think, I don't, I haven't written myself a program. Mm -hmm. I haven't, you know, I don't do anything like that. Everything's intuitive. Like if I'm filming a workout, I might not want to do a workout my yes. own that day or whatever. It, everything's intuitive. I'll go out hiking. I might do a yoga class. Mm -hmm. um, the way I eat is intuitive. But I wasn't always like that. I started back, I wrote myself a gym program. I, cal I actually tracked my macros. Like I, that's where you start. And then from there, you can, you can, do what you like because you have that intuition. Yeah, so the uh, analogy I always give to my client is like getting a driver's license. So, you know, if you were to drive from point A to point B, right, you might go, all right, let's get a car. So to get a car, you'd have to do, you know, 20 to 40 hours of lessons. You've got to pay for your um, the test. Then you've got to pay for a car. Then you've got to pay for insurance. So to get from point A to point B is going to take you, you know, 20 to 40 hours of work. And then you're going to pay thousands and thousands of pounds. And all you wanted to do was, you know, drive a simple distance so it's like why would you do that overtaking a bus the bus will cost you a quid and then you know you save yourself it's like two thousand journeys you could do right for the cost of uh, getting a car but the reason we do it is so we've got our license now our license grants us freedom we can go where we want we can um, drop the kids off pick the kids up leave for work later we're not you know restricted by the weather or whether the bus is running that day um, it just gives us the freedom and that's why i describe nutrition to my clients that if you're if you get your license, right, you've got the freedom to do what you want. You've got full understanding. And me, me and Karis, like, we had to learn about nutrition and how it works. Now we've got it. We're not relearning nutrition. The principles are always the same. We might learn things in addition that helps us, but the principles never change. So if you took the time to learn the principles and do your driver's license, then you've got it. And then your life, honestly, once you learn how calories and macro stuff work, your life has changed forever. You never have to fad diet, buy shakes, anything like that, because you know how they all work. And it's, so I always encourage people, take a little bit of time. It's going to take you one or two days, right, where you can sit down, mm -hmm. really learn this stuff, and then go, wow, I've got it. And how long have you got it yeah. for? The rest of your life. You can use this whenever you want. And, and it's, it's so powerful, isn't it? And unlike a fad diet, it doesn't change. So that, that nutrition advice will be the same in 20 years. It will still work in 20 years. It's not a fad. When we chase a fad and losing weight and stuff like that, it is very temporary. And then you go, oh, I've, yeah. done, I've, done, I've done this. And I've done, oh, I've done a C9 diet. And I've done this a slim, slimming world. I've done whatever it is, yeah. right? I've done all these things. And then you're still at the same stage. But all these companies have their license, but they're just giving you little bits of information to keep you yeah. on them you know, paying for their services or whatever. Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. They, they are giving, they know the nutrition secret. Yeah. They know the, the calorie deficit secret. If you're in a calorie deficit, you'll lose weight. Yeah. You can do it healthily or not healthily. Um, and then they're just giving you a, a way to get in a calorie deficit. Yeah, eat this or meal, eat these shakes. It. Yeah. Yeah. And I always say, like, when you start to use MyFitnessPal, for example, it's a really good tool, MyFitnessPal. Outstanding but it's tool, isn't it? not something you want to do forever. You don't want to be logging in your food forever. You do want to become intuitive. Um, but I say just, like, put on your little detective hat, like your little Sherlock Holmes yes. hat, and you're going to become a detective. You're going to learn, you know, oh, what's a really high fat food? Uh, why is my day so carbohydrate dense? Like, how am I going over my calories when I haven't really eaten very much? And you're becoming a detective and you're peeling away the layers and you're learning, yes. and then you take the journey on as yours, is so much better than having a shake. And I, I was discussing with like my clients, I was like, uh, how much do you think one cup of oil is? How many calories? I was like, oh, 200, 100, 300 calories, right? 2,000. One cup of yeah. oil is 2,000 calories. Now, I was like, when you go to a restaurant, right, and they're like, pasta, this, and boom, you're like, oh, cool, there's 200 grams of pasta, perfect. There's 100 grams of chicken, excellent. Let me log that into my fitness pal. But I'm not saying that pasta is going to soak up 2,000 calories. I'm saying they might soak up quite a few when they're just going with the oil. And they're yeah. So you're soaking up all these extra calories that you may be eating well, but you don't realize, 
you know, what yeah. they're adding into your food. But once you get an understanding of how all these things work, you might go, listen, I'll have the dressing on the side. Now you've saved yourself three, four hundred calories and you've got full control of your diet and you're not going to get caught out by any of these things. And, you know, if you're eating in a calorie deficit, let's just say you're, you're eating 1,700 calories and then it exposes every single diet out there of how ridiculous it is because you understand the rules. Like, okay, don't, don't um, drink, the, make sure you drink this shake and then by the time you're going to have this and then you're going to have this and you're like, it's just staying under 17. You're giving me different combinations to stay under uh, hit Same. 1700 calories, whether it's yeah. calling calories points, like weight watchers do, yeah. whether it's uh, like a Joe Wicks, which is just basically cutting out kind of high processed foods and eating good, clean foods, but you know, balancing it with vegetables mm -hmm. and a salad, which fills it out, so it's calorie controlled. Um, and I was going through with my clients who did a nutrition talk and we was going through the most extreme diets in the world. And I was like, once you now you know this stuff, right? Now you know how diets work and it's all in the calorie deficit. I went through um, the, the most extreme diets in the world. And one of them was a cotton wool diet. Do you know this one? Oh, no, that's what dancers used to do, like ballerinas Oh, my used God, to do. geez. So you dip cotton wool in oil and you swallow it so it goes down your esophagus and you fill your stomach up. Because you're eating too much food, there has to be a way to fill you up before you eat too much food. It's like, and all you need to say in the calorie deficit. Then you've got the tapeworm diet. Do you know this one? No. Tapeworm? So, so you, eat, you eat a tapeworm. Do we need a disclaimer? Yes. Do we need to be like, don't try this at home? By anyone? the way, don't try this at home. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you're considering yourself, you're getting the wrong message right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> but with tapeworm diet, you eat a tapeworm egg, the egg hatches, and the tapeworm eats your food. It lives in your stomach. That's how. And these are the most extreme. There's a sleeping beauty diet. You take sedatives. So you sleep for 17 hours a day. Because you're eating too much food, the only way to stop you eating too much food is to sleep through the whole thing. Knock yourself out. <laughs> yeah, knock it. And it's like, and all you need to do is just eat in a calorie deficit. And when you understand, when you get your license and you understand how food works, you're, you're sitting there going, this is madness. The things that are going on in yeah, the world, madness. it's just absolute madness. And you're sitting there and, uh, you know, terminology that you use, which is perfect, which is how weight loss works is very unsexy. Eat, yeah, it is eat, unsexy. eat a balanced it's diet, boring. exercise regularly, <laughs> sleep well, drink enough water. That's what you need. Yeah. How about shove cotton bottle balls, <laughs> bottle balls down your throat or eat your tapeworm? That sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, so and crazy, then you can brand it? your cotton wool and we can yes. sell it on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> or don't eat food, eat drink shakes instead of food. Like it's just, it's mad. Here's the thing then. This is the thing. This is where I love to delve into. So it's unsexy, it's boring. We all know it's a calorie deficit. It's balancing your macros. It's eating whole foods, drinking water, sleeping, la la la. Why then? is it so hard for people to do? Because they're confused by the media through all these messages and we don't work on this. Yes, 100%. It's the, you, you, if you are selling someone a solution, you can make money from that, right? And it's, there's, a battle, there's, a, there's lines drawn between trainers who want to do the right thing and then trainers who, and I say trainers loosely, I mean, we're talking about companies and stuff as well, right? Yeah, yeah. That were in it for the money, right? And it's very tough that if you're doing it for the right reasons to get any traction with what you're doing, because if you're saying to someone, listen, let's try and cut out the processed foods. Let's try and eat a balanced diet. Let's try and get your, you know, your macronutrients in and all these things like, okay, cool. But this one says I'll lose 10 pounds in 10 days. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Um, well, it's a lot of it's water. Yeah, but I'm going to try it anyway. <laughs> no, but it's going to crash your metabolism. Yeah, I, I, let me try it first and I'll come back to what you're saying afterwards. Like, uh, and it, it, you have this battle of, of trying to kind of go against stuff that is so fun to do and say and lose 10 pounds in 10 days over lose, you know, one pound a week for a year. <laughs> so, uh, I think as humans we really struggle with delayed gratification so we want that instant result we want that like i want to put in the work now and i want the equal of that amount of work i want to see it on the results i want to see it on the scale i want to see it on my waistline but we, if we become okay with delayed gratification so the meaning like if you start putting in the work now knowing that it's going to pay off six months down the line and pay off in dividends, pay off so much more than a quick diet. Um, if we can come to terms with that, that that's okay. Like, I'll, you know, like you said about spend two days to learn the nutrition and it will pay off for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key.
Yeah, and I think as well when you, that a delayed gratification is a, is a perfect example, and it's like if you're what we're doing as a society and, and you know as as people that kind of want to lose weight and stuff like that is we're going to a restaurant and ordering the cheesecake first. We're going, let's start with that. You're like, uh, what about the, should we, should we start with a starter maybe or just get some drinks? No, no, no. Cheesecake and a chocolate fudge cake. Why not? And we're just, we're constantly going for dessert first. And we're like, well, cool. We can have dessert whenever we want, which is, you know, um, a literal term also. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it's, uh, it comes down to, uh, once we understand how things work, we can have that whenever we want and knowing how it fits within our lifestyle. And just back to your point that you made, that, um, which is perfect, which is, you know, when you're tracking, you're not doing this forever. What you're doing is learning the ropes. So then once, you're, once you understand what your portion is like, once you know, all right, I've been eating this way, I know what sort of meal I have for lunch, I know what sort of meal I have for dinner, I know, like, if I've got a portion size and it's a you know, cheesecake factory size portion and that you normally have half of that, you're not going to go, well, that's what they serve me. You're going to be like, no, I'm cool with like this portion because so then you're not necessarily tracking your calories. You're just knowing, being intuitive. Nice. And then, you know, if yeah. you start putting on a little bit of weight, you kind of, all right, cool, let me tone it down a little bit for the next week yeah. to balance it out. And you're, you're not sitting there going, oh my God, quickly, let me get back on my fitness pal. I've not put on a pound. You're just, and that's how it works for the long term. You, once you've got your license, once you understand it, you have the freedom just to not track anymore understand how food works and you know just live a happy lifestyle where this isn't become the f- f- you, it isn't at your forefront all the time this isn't the most dominant thing about you you know i see people on instagram and their worlds are their names on the instagram are my fat loss journey or slimming world yeah. insert name and i thought yeah. that's funny because their whole identity is based around them losing weight not their personality not their family not it's just it's based around i'm losing weight this is my whole identity and i thought a sh- it's a shame it's down to that because yeah. it should be who you are. And what happens with that person when their identity is, I'm on a weight loss journey, I'm losing weight, la, la, la. What happens when they actually get there? Who do they become then? Yes. I, do you or suddenly transform into, now I'm super duper happy person. So along the way, are you a bit worried about losing that identity? Like it's just creating more and more roadblocks. Yeah, there's a lot. I, I've noticed when I go onto these profiles and stuff like, oh, I didn't, I didn't lose my weight this week. I'll be on it next week. Now there's pressure. You've built a social media yeah. pressure to uh, live up to this persona of I'm going to eat healthy all the time. And it's like, I do not eat healthy. Like literally we no. went for a, a coffee and a croissant. That's... I'm a, tr- I'm a trainer. It's what I do for a living. And that was my morning. Yeah. And it was just because as long as I balance my day out, it's all okay. There's nothing it's wrong with anything. Okay. It's, uh, it's yeah. all okay. And it's, everything's that, okay. If I can implore that emotion on anyone else, like, it's okay. It's all okay, But yeah. once you've done the work, yeah. And, yeah, and, and I think that's, that's one of the um, things, like, to go back to the, the walking workouts and the growth and stuff like that, I think being as authentic as that, that I'm not, trying to keep up a persona i'm not trying to say you mm. need to eat this one the amount of people that go oh well, it's my birthday like someone said put up in a post in my facebook group and said oh it's my birthday today i'm only going to have a little bit of cake as a treat i went eat the whole thing if you don't <laughs> eat that whole cake i'm deleting you from this group you've got one day go because it's like your, your life shouldn't be your diet your life should be your family, your friends, going out and enjoying yourself. This is something yeah. that, you know, health is going to complement what we're doing. But just, yeah. I ju- you know, it's just, I just want everyone to find that, ha- that po- this, this shouldn't be it. This shouldn't be it. This shouldn't be the point Me of your too. existence. To imagine being born on this earth and going, you know, you, you get to the heaven's gates. Go, How was it? Yeah, I, I basically contract my whole life on my body composition. Like, dude, yeah. what about How the travelling? What about the family? Yeah. What about the having fun? What about like exploring stuff why would you you know it's it's crazy when you look at it like that and being on I your know. deathbed and going what's your biggest regret oh just wish i counted my macros <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yeah it's crazy it's crazy i know i know it's so sad but i think i love chatting to you because we just have the same like passion and yeah, like 100%. enthusiasm for like just want as many people to hear this message as possible yeah like personal trainers eat biscuits we eat cake yeah and, and they fall off so hard they fall off and they don't <laughs> post that stuff up because they're like oh this is eggy and they only post yeah, that what they do they take photos of when they look good they take 100 photos for six months they'll only post up photos from those 100 then once they get back in yeah. shape they get, they'll, they'll, they'll get some new photos but that whole time they're not not we're not all in shape all year and when i say in shape right we are he- or a healthy 
body yeah. fat. But when we're talking about like, oh, being on a, a front cover of men's or women's health, I, there's, there's not many of us that look like that. I don't look like that. I've, I'm sporting. I'm going to town on my dad bod at the moment because it just, when I had yeah. my baby, it was just like, it was, everything was hard. Everything was, to get more than two hours kip was so hard. And then the last I thing know. you want to do is train. And with the work, but it's, um, it's lost yeah. my train of thought. What happened there? <laughs> but this actually segues perfectly because I just wanted to touch on before we go, like, because I talk about parenthood a little bit, um, becoming a mum last year. No, it was definitely not last year. It was the year before. Yeah, my um, God. Yeah, crazy. Um, but I'd love to just hear from, like, a guy's point of view. And I think, you know, my listenership is mostly women. Mm -hmm. But same I think it's really cool. Like, I just want to know, like, you became a dad six months ago. What does that mean to you? How did that impact your life? Have you had any, like, mindset shifts? Like, have you got any insights for us? Yeah, um, like, I, 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 like, for me, I'm someone that was born to be a dad. Like, that was my... Uh, I always went to wait, wait to be the right moment. But, you know, when something's inside you, I was always going to be... That was always my thing, to be a dad. And um, me and my... Uh, it gets me a bit emotional, actually. But me and, me and Roberta, mm. my wife, we, it, we, it was a long journey to get there. It took... We had a lot of losses on the way, and it was a lot of... Oh. It, was, it was tough. Really tough couple of years we had. And then when we finally had a daughter, I, I literally couldn't be more appreciative. I can't be more thankful. And all this stuff that's great, you know, the following on YouTube, the, 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 um, the, the business I built and stuff like that, it's none of it matters to me, like, in terms of, like, on a, a com comparison level. Like, it's, yeah. just, it's just my daughter. Like, I love this girl with, ugh, I can't even tell you. And it's just, every, every, mo every mother knows that. Like, the moment you see your child... It's just like, you cannot explain it. And it's so funny because, you know, old reality TV show and stuff, and you, you, people will be on Big Brother and they'll be like, they'll be like, oh, do you want to get back and see my kids? You're like, grow up. Yeah. And the kids sitting there yeah. playing with like Lego going, they don't even know their mum's got back and they come out and they're like, oh, so go see your mum. They're like, no, I've got this brick and brack on, I do. And like, oh, hugging them. And the kid <laughs> does not care. And you're like, you only get it. I think you only get it when you've had a kid. And yeah. I, I describe it as like, it's every love you have when you're born is a learnt love. Your parents and stuff like that, you're learning to love, right? But when you have a mm. kid, it's uh, instinctual. It's soon as they're, yeah. not even they're born, they're conceiving. It's just, it's, it's there. And you are everything. Mm. Everything is your, is your child. And you just want the best. And I used, to, I used to not have a go at, I'm not saying have a go at, but we used to do walking challenges in my boot camp. So I used to put people in groups. And people were trying to try and find each other. I went, who is this person? I've got a picture of two kids. I went, guys, for this next month, can you put a picture of you as your WhatsApp instead of your kids? Because no one can find <laughs> anyone. And um, I get it now. All I want to put up yeah. is pictures of my kid. All I want to do is like, look at her on Jumperoo because it's just, it's, in, it's, in, <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the best thing. And when you start talking about mindset shift, it's my, I mean, talk about a rocket up your bum. I put my, I first, my first walking workout up when she was nine days old. So she is a representation of when I started on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So they actually go correlate. So how long been YouTube is actually her age. She's six months yesterday. And, um, but it puts a rocket because all I think in my head is, this is my own, you know, own motivation. I went, will she be proud of me? Then it makes me just go, oh, I want more. I, I, this isn't it. Me too. This, this is, yeah. And it's, I think whether you're losing weight, whether you're, um, you know, you're trying to improve your mentality job or whatever you're doing, the, you know, having your why and it being way more important than you becomes so big. Now, you may lose yeah. weight, for example, because you want to be an influence for someone else. That is still, uh, you know, something bigger than you. And a lot of people find when they lose weight, people start asking them how they did it. So then they start becoming an influencer as such because people want to... They become a positive influence to people around them. And then this, 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 it grows, right? Um, so yeah. I, I feel like, yeah, when she was born, this, it was a new level. It was a new, I was motivated yeah. before, but it's just this, I think, this need to want her to be, to say, that's my dad. I think that's what my motivation is. Uh, just exactly, I could just take the words out of your mouth and just repeat them because it puts such a rocket up my ass mm. when, when I was like at home, you know, nursing Indy at the very beginning. And I was like, I need to build some kind of empire where yes. she's going to be so proud that I'm her mum. Yeah. 
Um, and, and time as well. I don't know if you find this, like time just becomes like, you get so much more done in your time because it's like so finite. Yeah, that, that's literally it. I mean, it's what's been madness for us is um, we've been a little bit unlucky, but I would take never sleeping for this little girl. But it, we've been really unlucky that she had a really severe reflux issue. So as soon as she oh, ate, no. she would, she couldn't be, we couldn't put her down. She'd be sick, right? And mm. it's obviously dangerous. So we'd have to hold her up for around 45 minutes to an hour. That was only one hour till her next feed. So then yeah. we, uh, at, at first, you know, Roberto had to do 24 hour feeds for two days solid. When you're sleeping, I mean, one hour, I mean, she wasn't sleeping at all. So then um, in turn, that affects, you know, how much you produce. And it was just this really stressful period at the beginning. And mm. basically this reflux issue went on for four months. It still goes on now, but it's, it's in existence now. But after four months of this reflux issue, we hadn't slept more than Roberta less than me. But my average sleep for, for bearing in mind, you know, some days you have a seven hour or eight hour. My average sleep for four months was three and a half hours. Oof. That was a seven, yeah. And, uh, and Roberta's was less than that. Because obviously, you, as a guy, it's weird because you, you want to help, but I can't pop you my can't boob out. really. I, yeah. No. I mean, <laughs> it's just, I, I'm going to try, but nothing's going to come out, love. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're kind of doing breastfeeding as well, so we couldn't do form or anything like that. But you can kind of just go, I'm here. Do you want another pillow? But there's not really much you can do. And then uh. from, from the reflux, in four months, she went into sleep regression. Then that was crazy. Yeah. Then the sleep that, regression. That four-month sleep regression is awful because you're like, we're nailing it. We're really good parents. Yes. We're doing it. We're Just doing it. Oh, full sense of security. Yeah. She had a, <laughs> yeah. She had a first, she, had a, she slept for eight hours. And we were like, Ooh. the greatest parents in all the <laughs> land. And then she went, only joking. <laughs> And uh, yeah. The, yeah, and then she went into sleep regression and that lasted for, we thought it was for two months, but she actually went straight into teething. So from the moment <laughs> she's born till now, we're, we haven't really slept. But what's, oh my what, goodness. Yeah, what, and we've actually spoke to, well, one of our friends had a baby and we was like, oh, how are you getting on no sleep? This was, the baby was one week old. And he goes, it's all right. Um, she wakes up, does one feed, because they're doing formula. She wakes up, does one feed. I do second feed and that's it. So we both have about eight, nine hours of kip. I was like, what? How did, this is yeah. a miracle child. But I think we just got unlucky with the reflux. But yeah. now, now, she's, now she's going for this teething, which is super tough, but it's amazing. And I have got so much appreciation and no guy will ever understand until you see it in action how, what superheroes women are. Like it is on a different level mm -hmm. from giving birth to, you know, um, to breastfeeding, to taking care of that instinct of wanting to do everything for that child to keep them safe and healthy. And, you yeah. know, I'll be like, no, she'll be right there. And <laughs> nope, we're doing all the reading, we're doing all the research to make sure that that is the exact thing we should be doing. And, you know, Roberta's just, my wife, she's absolutely amazing with it. And, um, but it's just the, what women go through, I, can, I do not know how women of the past, mums of the past, had done this th stuff with less information. Because now yeah, we're, we're I lucky. I think that sometimes. Yeah, with this books and there's stuff that can help you. But now, but at a time where it was just like you at home while the husband's off working and it was that old school mentality where women at home do it mm. by themselves. How? How did they do it? How are we like? Instinct <laughs> and like what your mum teaches you, I guess, and just a lot of instinct. But yeah, yeah. it's crazy what we do as women. Like it is mental. It's really nice to hear appreciation from, from yeah. a guy as well. I'm so sorry you haven't been able to sleep yet, but I'm a year ahead of you in the game because yeah. Indy is like 16 months and she slept 12 hours now. So in a year's time, Rick, you'll get some sleep. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's it. And do you know what's funny, right? Bear in mind, I have no clue. So I looked up teething. So she started teething. This is like on five months. I thought, how long is this going to go on for? In my, in my ignorance, I thought it was going to say two weeks. And it said, this can be up to two years. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> but my bags are down here and I was literally going two years yeah, so any time like, in the future any time Sophia's like a little bit cranky you just like oh yeah she's teething yeah yeah <laughs> like, that's it you just always put it down to that she's teething she's teething but listen Rick this has been like the most epic conversation oh just so it's much fun it's so nice to chat to you you too. I am beyond proud of your success and you are, I, you're such a star you were amazing. And right back at you. Because can I just say one thing as well? Like a while ago, I remember Karis had messaged me. This is when I was doing my boot camp. She said, I'm starting online. Have you got any tips? I remember speaking to her about tips. And then full circle, I messaged her. 
about two, three years later, <laughs> I went, Carrie, I want to move on. Can you help me? And it was this nice full circle that we'd both been I there know. for each other over the years that kind of like, uh, you know, we're now having this conversation. We're both trainers. We both live in different countries and we've both got these kids. That, you know, it's just, it's just nice that we started 10 years ago at college to now be here. It's, it's incredible. I know. It's really cool, isn't it? Yeah. I, love, I just love reconnecting with everyone like this. But um, tell the girlies then and the guys uh, who are listening where they can find you and where, yeah, they can go check you out. Do not find me. Stay on Karis's platform. That's what my <laughs> message is to you. I'm not giving you oh, any He's my, the best podcast guest I'm not giving ever. you any of my credentials. You are in the safest hands possible. Karis is absolutely amazing. And we will be doing something soon together. We're, we're putting I'm it out so there, won't excited. we, Karis? We'll be doing something soon together. Yeah. Um, so I'm Little not giving you, teaser. Yeah, I'm not giving you any more credentials. Stay with Karis. She is absolutely okay. amazing. And, uh, Rick doesn't exist, but if you do fancy getting some <laughs> steps in, you know, <laughs> he's on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, I don't know, if you if you want to do if you want to do steps, just only the steps. Um, get fit with Rick on YouTube. You'll find yeah. me there, um, and that's that's good for just getting your steps count up. And then yeah, which is part of the whole journey. Exactly, and it just helps when you're indoors. If you're locked indoors, if you've got kids and you're like you know you're trying to fit it around them it works really well so it's just it's that's it that's all i'm giving you <laughs> i love it i love it all right thank you so much thank my you, love. and we will be seeing all you guys listening in the next episode thank you so much guys yeah Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I loved recording that episode so much. I have linked Rick's incredible channel with all his lovely walking workouts in the description. So make sure you check him out. If you enjoyed this, leave a review, subscribe, like it, all that jazz. And if you want to come and join me for that free three-day Kickstarter so we can start your health and fitness journey off building some sexy muscles and building your fitness and getting you feeling confident with your nutrition, then click the link below. And I'll also link all the information to come and join my Sweat It Bootcamp so you can be in the Sweat It Squad, which is the coolest place to be. Um, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.